Well, hey, everybody, welcome back for another uh, remote learning session here in Maine Fish and Wildlife. Um, hopefully by now you've finished up the Maine moose harvest analysis and submitted that. This is going to be our last uh, kind of detailed look at a big game species here in Maine. We're looking at the big three in this mammals unit, deer, moose, and uh, we're finishing up with bears today. Uh, we've already mentioned this on our Maine Mammal Organizer quiz, but... Uh, we have one species of bear in Maine and one only, and that's the black bear, Ursus americanus. In fact, uh, while grizzly bears or brown bears used to range all across North America, uh, we don't really have any fossil record of them here in Maine. And it seems like we've had kind of black bears right along where in other parts of the country uh, they used to have both and in many places still do. But here in Maine, we've got black bears, Ursus americanus. They are an awesome creature, one of my favorite things to encounter in the Maine woods. I've had some cool experiences with them over the years, uh, and nothing cooler than this year getting to go and visit um, that den site with uh, a former student there, Nick. Pretty awesome stuff. Um, so let's get right in here. We'll, we'll get familiarized with bears, and then I'll get you started on your harvest analysis assignment. We'll start thinking about how we uh, manage the bear population in Maine, why we do that, and uh, what role inland fisheries and wildlife plays in this whole thing. So we, we talked about this in class a little bit, but um, bears, uh, a biologist would say that bears are sexually dimorphic, mainly off size. And if you look here, uh, male bears, what we call boars, um, can push 600 pounds. And in fact, I believe that, that bear right there is a state record archery uh, bear. And that thing is something like 599 pounds. That's a really, really big bear from up in the Greenville area. Um, so those boars, those males do get much, much larger where females, um, tend to run smaller. And, uh, that's an example of sexual dimorphism. But remember we said in, for the purposes of our class, if you just see a bear walking around, it's nearly impossible to tell the difference. So we say maybe they're not sexually dimorphic for, for our definition. But if we're, if we're looking at the hardline definition, uh, they very well uh, probably are based on size. Um, so yeah, when I think about that, that sow, the female bear that I visited a few weeks ago in her den, um, what did we say? She weighed something like 158 pounds. She was nine years old. She's middle-aged, full-grown bear. So um, certainly nowhere even near that 400-pound range that some sows can get up to. And that would probably be late summer if she didn't have cubs to nurse all summer and she'd been fattening up on beech nuts and acorns and things like that. She might uh, start tipping the scales a little higher. Um, in terms of habitat, much of Maine is really prime bear habitat. They like a mixture of all forest ages. Uh, they really are just true generalists, and we'll get at that here in a minute. But if you look at that kind of green area, you know, the entire northern two-thirds of the state is considered really prime bear habitat. Um, and no surprise, there are plenty of bears in that range. We have one of the highest bear populations in the lower 48 here in Maine, and uh, it is it is constantly growing in fact our bear population is ballooning um, so that that northern two-thirds of the state really prime bear habitat we get into that secondary range through central and some of southern Maine and then that coastal southern strip south kind of southern Maine there um, is really what we call peripheral range there are bears there but they are not nearly in the number that they are um, in northern Maine and one of the things you'll notice about that map is if you could draw where the vast majority of people live in Maine it would be right in that kind of secondary and peripheral area and that's kind of not a coincidence bears uh, kind of like this uh, these large tracts of undisturbed habitat when we start to get into suburbia more uh, we just we don't see as good a bear habitat around so um, yeah they do they do rely on a mixed forest uh, in a variety of habitats, but they're generalists. They can survive in a lot of different forest types. In terms of diet, our bears are, are omnivores. They eat both plant and animal material, but they are really heavily reliant on plant material here in Maine. I love that picture, and I use that one specifically on this uh, presentation because the majority of the bears I see are in the Allagash region when I'm up there in June fishing every year and they're almost always out on the edge of the road and they're eating clover just like that bear is right there and they're fattening up on that that lush green growth of spring clover uh, and usually they'll see the truck coming around a corner and immediately hightail it off into the woods you catch a very quick glimpse of them but they, they love to get out on the edges of those logging roads and eat clover uh, that time of year but you know, they're eating all kinds of other native grasses and uh, buds off of plants in the spring. And then also when those uh, 
deer fawns and moose calves begin dropping in late May, uh, bears are opportunistic predators of those and basically the number one predator of those two species here in Maine. Uh, and then summertime, they switch over to hard, uh, hard and soft mast, well, really soft mast berries, and they'll eat a lot of insects, bee and ant larvae. We had a bear right in Scarborough last year destroying the beehives at the farm I work at. Um, their numbers in southern Maine are on the rise, and we're going to see more and more of those kind of issues as uh, bear numbers increase. And then fall, they switch over uh, to the hard mast, uh, really on acorns and beech nuts and things like that, things that are high in fat that they can uh, you know, really add up, um, add that body fat before they get ready for their winter dormancy. So they'll eat a little bit of everything. Time of year is really dependent on their diet. I remember visiting my uncle who used to live in eastern Maine where, the, where our blueberry industry uh, resides and visiting him he lived across the street from a big blueberry field and walking around in that field in August finding huge piles of bear scat that were made up of just pure blueberries and they would be out there you know all night long feeding on those blueberries out there uh, so reproductively bears are amazing they're gonna breed you know May through August but mainly kind of you know that month of June the boars are out searching for receptive sows and they will breed but the sows do a really cool thing called delayed implantation. So she, her egg is fertilized, but it will not implant and begin to develop until she actually goes into hibernation that next winter. And it won't happen unless she's fat enough. And that's a pretty amazing adaptation for a creature that needs to give birth uh, while hibernating and nurse cubs, which is really calorically demanding. So it makes sense then that if you're not fat enough going into the den, then you probably shouldn't become pregnant because it's not going to work out for you or your cubs. But if they have enough body fat, those eggs will begin to develop. And about January, uh, those cubs are born in the safety of a den in the middle of the winter. They rely on mom for everything. They're altricial. Their eyes are closed. They're almost hairless. They're about a pound, maybe a little less when they're born. And mom keeps them warm and nurses them. Uh, those cubs that I visited this year were about a month old and they were about 3.9 pounds at that point and their eyes had just begun to open up. So they're going to spend that first full year with mom. They're going to go into the den next year with her and uh, spend their winter dormancy with her one more time and then they're going to leave that following spring. That is a classic example of K selection in reproduction, right? They're having, you know, on average two and a half cubs here in Maine, somewhere between one and three and they're spending about a year and a half really getting them ready. So that's a great example of case selection and altricial offspring, some of those uh, keywords we've been learning about in this unit. And then finally, that, that winter survival thing with bears is maybe the most amazing thing to me about our black bears is that um, they're not a true hibernator in that their, their metabolism doesn't quite get low enough and their body temperature stays a little too high and they can and do wake up if disturbed in the wintertime. True hibernators like woodchucks and, and bats and things like that, if you were to disturb them in their den, they physically cannot wake up. Uh, they would they would look dead and feel cold to the touch. Uh, bears are not that way. If you disturb a bear's den in the wintertime, they absolutely can wake up and can run off and you know have their wits about them pretty well. They're sleeping, they're dormant, they're in a state of you know torpor, it's called, but they're not truly hibernating. But it's amazing that they can do this for five to six months. In that time, they're really not eating or drinking. Um, the the sows, if pregnant, are going to give birth during this time. It's just a, it's it's a crazy thing. Um, when you really get down and think about it. So our bears are amazing creatures. Uh, they are a game animal here in Maine, which means they're hunted for food and or sport. Uh, and we hunt them in a variety of ways and for a variety of reasons. And we're going to talk about that today. So as a game species, bears are uh, hunted for food. They provide a lot of food. Uh, if we go to our harvest analysis assignment in Google Classroom uh, and upload that to Notability, I can show you uh, the assignment here. Hopefully you've already put it in notability. Um, right off the bat, let's think about some reasons that we hunt bears here in Maine. Um, in our reading, they, they kind of note here that uh, last year, you know, uh, we harvested 3,314 bears. This is 20, the 2018 season, and they estimate that produced 265,000 pounds of bear meat uh, to Maine families. So, uh, they are absolutely a popular food source here in Maine for those that choose to hunt bears. Um, 
So we hunt them for food. We also hunt them out of this idea of population control. Our wildlife biologists study our bear population really closely. That's part of what I got to go and see firsthand. We're studying how many bears are coming into the population, and we know through hunting how many are coming out. Based on the numbers Inland Fisheries and Wildlife has right now, we need to harvest about 4,000 bears a year here in Maine to keep our population steady. And you'll notice last year we missed that mark by about 700 bears, and I can tell you 2019 was even worse. We missed by about 1,000 bears. So that tells us that we're, our population is growing. We can't keep up with the harvest in order to keep the population steady. As our population of bears grows, if we look on our map here where all the bears are being harvested, we're going to see more and more human bear conflicts here in southern and central Maine where the majority of people live. And we're seeing that firsthand already. That bear I mentioned in Scarborough that was tearing into our, our beehives. And there have been plenty of sightings of bears in North Saco and Dayton lately. Uh, nothing wrong with them being around. It's just that often when bears and people mix, uh, it never works out well, especially for the bear. Um, we're not worried necessarily about bear attacks here in Maine, but what we're worried about is things like bears getting into trash cans and becoming habituated to people for food. Um, and this time of year, especially as spring comes on and bears wake up from hibernation, they're starving. They've run out of fat stores. There's almost nothing for them to eat. They love to get into people's bird feeders, trash cans, things like that, any food that's left outside. And that can cause conflict with people. And then again, though, any, any beekeepers in Maine will tell you firsthand, this can be a challenging place to keep bees with the number of bears that we have around and more and more so here in Southern Maine as well. So there's all kinds of ways bears can create conflict with people. We're, again, we're not worried about it. We're not worried about bears coming around and eating us. We're worried about kind of those bear human conflicts that we don't deal with uh, as much with other creatures. So, um, that's the other main reason we hunt bears is try to reduce the likelihood of having those um, human bear conflicts here in the state. So let's think about uh, we're gonna we're gonna take this assignment just like the moose thing. We're gonna cut this in half. We're gonna work on one part one day and uh, the other part the next day. So today, just like day one with our moose, we're gonna look at uh, the construction of our graph of our map. I'm sorry, and we're gonna build our harvest map for bears here in the state of Maine. And the directions lay it out perfectly for us here. It tells us step one, we're gonna use the table in the right-hand corner of our data sheet to show the total number of bears harvested in each WMD. And then we're gonna use the criteria below to create a key and color code each WMD based upon harvest totals. Very similar to what we did with the moose. So first thing I gotta do is put in the harvest total for each WMD, I can get that right off the map. And then I'm gonna color code them based on the harvest. If there's 150 or more, I'm gonna color that red with my highlighter. If there's between 51 and 149, I'll color it yellow. And if there's less than 50 bears harvested in a WMD, we'll, we'll, we'll color that one green. So let's go back here, let's, let's take a look at our map. I'll do a handful of WMDs with you. And then again, um, set you free so that you can uh, work up, finish this map up on your own and be ready to work on the graphs next time around. So right off the bat, WMD number one, I'll do the first three here, it'll be easy. Uh, WMD number one, we got 168 bears. WMD number two had 166. And WMD three had 170. So 168, 166, and 170. Let's go. Uh, 168, 166, and 170 in WMDs one, two, and three. Remember, those are the three northernmost WMDs. And I'm gonna attach that same map again to this assignment, the real map, so you can reference those numbers if need be. Uh, and let's go back, I'll do, I'll do a handful more with you here and then we'll talk about color coding. So um, if I look at districts four, five, and six, holy cow, look at district four, 213 uh, bears harvested, district five, 160, and six, 221. Okay, here we go, 213, 160, and 221. 213, 160, and 221. All right, so uh, based on our color coding there, I can tell right off the bat all three, all six of those districts are gonna be red. Uh, I kinda wanna find a smaller one here. Let's take a look at district you know, 20 where we live, um, or, or where many of us live. Some of us live in 24, some live, if you live in Northern Arundel, you live in 20. I, I love this map because we can look by town you can see one bear was harvested in 2018 in Alfred, two in Sanford, one out there in Waterboro. But those are the nearest towns to, to Saco, Dayton, Arundel that had bears harvested. Um, so let's go, let's look at District 20. 
for a total and we'll see that district 20 harvested 26 bears and I can go back to my map here and uh, we harvested 26 bears in district 20 actually I'm not gonna attach that map because our map right here in the assignment has them labeled for us that's pretty convenient I just realized that let's do one more kind of uh, medium range uh, district here just so we can get all of our colors down how about district 13 we had 61 bears in district 13 so I can go back up here district 13 is gonna be 61 bears so if we talk color coding now I can go into my highlighter I'm gonna use red and let's see let's do that uh, I can use red now I can go in and I can color code all of my districts boom color them red all the ones that have more than 150 bears harvested these guys are going to end up red and i'm going to clean this up after i log off here and finish my real map uh districts that have well would we say between uh 51 and 149 those are going to be yellow i can see that district 13 is obviously going to be yellow and uh we'll go back here and i know district uh 26 because it had 50 or less is going to be a green district if there's no bears harvested just leave it blank and that's our goal for today remember don't submit this today we're going to submit it at the end of next class after you finish up those graphs that we'll work on together so the goal today listen to lecture get familiarized with bears and get your map done and be ready to jump in and do those graphs next time as always any questions shoot me an email i'm here all day willing to help um, and let me know thanks again for logging in